Picture this, instead of this 2023 Bolt EUV, you have a brand spanking new 2027 Bolt sitting in your garage. You're about to plug it in for the night, eyeing that 100% charge limit and thinking of it as a ticking time bomb. A voice in your head, or worse yet, a know-it-all commenter whispers, don't do it, stick to the 80% or kiss your battery goodbye. But what if I told you, for the new wave of EVs like the 2027 Bolt, charging to 100% daily isn't just okay, sometimes it's the smart play. Because today, we're busting that bunk found in the comments section here wide open. Hey everyone, welcome back to Jim's EV Adventures. If you're new to this channel, please hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications so you don't miss out on more EV Bunk Blasters and other tips, reviews, and deep dives like this episode. Today we're tackling a hot topic that sparked some debate in the comments. Charging LFP batteries to 100% for daily driving. A commenter recently called me out saying I was wrong and that LFP batteries need to be treated just like NMC batteries. Stick to that 20 to 80% sweet spot to avoid damage. Well, politely, the commenter is wrong. And today I'm going to explain why with a full breakdown of the science. Plus, we'll tie this into the exciting upcoming 2027 Bolt EV, which is switching to LFP battery chemistry. This could be a game changer for affordable EV. So let's dive in. First off, let's set the stage. Lithium ion batteries power most EVs today, but not all are created equal. There are two big players that we're talking about here, and they're NMC, that's nickel manganese cobalt, and LFP, or lithium iron phosphate. NMC has been the go-to for high-end EVs because it packs more energy density, meaning longer range and a smaller, lighter battery pack. Think Tesla's high trim models and many other luxury EVs but it comes with some baggage, especially when it comes to charging habits. The issue with NMC isn't the battery tech as a whole, but specifically the cathode and electrode structure. NMC uses a layered oxide cathode, mostly made of nickel, manganese, and cobalt. When you charge or discharge the battery, lithium ions shuttle back and forth between the anode and cathode. This causes the cathode material to expand and contract. We're talking up to five or even 10% volume change per cycle. And at extreme stages of charge, like above 90% or below 10%, these swings become more intense. And over time, this leads to micro cracks in the cathode particles. Those cracks let the electrolyte seep in, triggering unwanted side reactions you end up with a thicker solid electrolyte interphase layer, lost lithium ions, and faster capacity fade. Nickel-rich versions, which are common for better range, are even worse. They can release oxygen from the structure, heating things up and accelerating degradation even more. That's why manufacturers like Tesla recommend daily limit charges to 80% for NMC batteries. It's not like 100% is gonna kill your battery overnight, but doing it daily will shorten the lifespan. For occasional long trips, go for it. But for everyday use, that 20 to 80% range minimizes stress and keeps your range consistent over many more years. Now, flip the script to LFP batteries. These use an olivine structured cathode based on iron phosphate, and it's a whole different ball game. The key advantage, minimal volume changes, less than 1% during cycling. No big expansions or contractions, meaning no cracking like the NMC. LFP also runs at a lower voltage, around 3.2 to 3.3 volts per cell, when compared to 3.3 six to 3.9 for NMC. 
and that cuts down on heat and side reactions. The result, LFP batteries can handle deep cycles and full charges without the same wear and tear. We're talking three to 5,000 full cycles before any noticeable fade. That's often two to four times longer than NMC batteries. Don't get me wrong, LFP has trade-offs. Lower energy density means shorter range for the same battery size. And it can struggle a bit in cold weather, but that's why EVs have shifted to heat pumps to help these batteries warm up faster and perform better. But for durability and cost, it's a winner. That's why companies are shifting toward it, especially for affordable models. Speaking of which, let's talk about the 2027 Chevy Bolt. GM has confirmed that the Reborn Bolt does use LFP battery chemistry, and I can confirm that. It's a big upgrade from the previous NMC packs. The new model packs a 65 kilowatt hour battery and it's the same size as the NMC it replaces because energy density in the newer LFP batteries is just as good as five-year-old or now 10-year-old NMC battery density. It actually gives slightly more range than the NMC version, about eight miles more. But it also comes with faster charging at up to 150 kilowatt DC fast charging, getting you from 10 to 80% in just 26 minutes. And as I've already reported, the price starts at a budget-friendly $29,995, making it one of the most affordable EVs on the market. Why does the LFP switch matter for bolts? Well, tying it back to our charging debate, you won't have to baby it like an NMC battery. Chevy's guidance will likely echo what Tesla does with its LFP models. Charge to 100% daily if you want to, and do a full charge at least once a week to calibrate the battery management system for accurate range estimates. No more worrying about those cathode cracks or rapid degradation from high state charges. But I must caution you a bit. It isn't good to charge any lithium ion battery to 100% and let it sit. If your car is going to be idle for more than a handful of days, try to leave the charge state in the 40 to 60% range. And the final word here, the LFP stability means better longevity, especially for daily drivers who plug in at home overnight. Is the LFP invincible? This is a word to the wise, of course not. A recent study in the Journal of Electrochemical Society pointed out that repeated 100% charges can cause some anode buildout in extreme conditions, like in very hot climates, leading to minor capacity loss over time, up to about 24% in simulated 10-year test. Still, that's way better than NMC, and for most folks, it's going to be negligible. If you're a perfectionist, maybe charge to 100% after a deep discharge once a week. But overall, LFP lets you maximize your usable range without guilt. Now, Imagine owning an EV with a battery that doesn't lose much range over 200,000 miles of driving. It also charges quicker on road trips, and it costs less upfront thanks to cheaper LFP materials. It's safer, too, with lower fire risk due to a more stable chemistry. These are the tangible, everyday benefits of LFP. And charge to 100% every day if you're driving it every day. It's not going to hurt a thing. So after all that and to that commenter and anyone else wondering, you're definitely not right about LFP, but LFP changes the rules, so you're definitely not wrong either. It's not about treating all batteries the same. It's about understanding the chemistry and the advantage goes to LFP, especially when it comes to everyday charging. If you're in the market for a new EV, the 2027 Bolt with its LFP pack could be the smart pick for hassle-free ownership. What do you think? Have you experienced LFP charging in your EV? Drop it in the comments below and let's get this discussion going, but do keep it friendly. If this video helped, give it a thumbs up and share it with your EV curious friends. And please don't forget to subscribe. More than 80% of the people watching this video right now 
are not subscribed. Subscribing does help this channel grow and it helps me to make more videos like the one you're watching now. I'd like to thank you again for stopping by and I will see you out there or somewhere along the route from point A to point B. Jim's EV Adventures out.